Hi guys, nice to see you all again. Well, I technically can't see you, but you know what I mean. Um, Leon's behind the camera today, and today we are going to talk about a very, very important subject, and it's all about your posture. So today, we're going to talk about lordosis, or an anteriorly tilted pelvis. So some of you might be wondering, what the hell is lordosis, or an anteriorly tilted pelvis? It's actually really, really common. I'm going to show you what it looks a little bit like, okay? So, I'm relatively kind of neutral at the moment. I've got a normal, kind of natural curve in my lower spine, okay? If I've got an anteriorly tilted pelvis, my pelvis is tilted forward like this, and my, I have a big curve in my lordotic spine which is not great, it also gives you the appearance of your belly sitting forward. So if you want a nice flat stomach, you probably don't want to be really lordotic. So as I touched on earlier, it's so, so common. It tends to be people that are quite overweight that have it because the weight is pulling you forwards. Ladies that are pregnant get it quite often. But the most common reason for it, and the reason that we want to talk about today, is people that have quite a sedentary life and kind of sit down a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to break it down pretty much really simply how the muscles work so you guys can see, oh that's what's going on, how do I avoid it, oh I, I have that, I get this pain, or, or maybe you just want to, you have an office job and you want to avoid it as such. So if you're sitting down for a long period of time, this is me standing up, this is me sitting down, I brought my thighs parallel to the floor and these are my little shins down here, really yeah, small shins yeah, in my case. Small shins. So what happens is my hip flexors, these muscles down here are what's pulled my thighs up, so they're engaged. My glutes and my hamstrings on the back are going to be nice and loose, they're going to be stretched out. So the problem is with the hip flexors is they insert on your femur, on your thigh bone. They come up and around the back, so they kind of pull on the front of your pelvis, tipping it forwards, and they also come onto your lower spine where they originate, and it tucks it in nice and tight if they're very tight, which is not really what we want to do. Look good camera work, how are you doing there? So the problem comes with lordosis, because it's not very functional in, in your everyday life. If you're doing a squat, for example, you've got weight on your shoulders, you want to get a nice deep range of movement. For starters, as you come down, you're going to have a nice big curve, I say nice, it's not nice, a big curve in your lower spine, and when that weight is sitting on your shoulders, it's going to put a lot of pressure on your lower back, it's going to be uncomfortable. It's also going to be quite difficult for you to get a good range of motion and get low, get all the muscles working and get, you know, time under tension on the muscles, because you can't get down there, because your hip flexors are so tight. So we're going to give you some tips and things that you probably want to do to help correct that, avoid it, strengthen up the glutes and hamstrings because they're what's got weak. One of the really good things to do is what we call a bridge. You've seen this a hundred times before, but we're going to give you a little clip of what's going on anyway, just so you know what you're doing. When you're doing a bridge, you want to make sure your hands are by your side, you're nice and supported, your feet are flat on the floor. Before you start doing anything, engage your abs and try and make your spine neutral. Don't let yourself already have a big excessive curve, okay, like you do normally if you're lordotic. So try and keep a nice normal curve, natural curve in the spine, brace the abs, and what you're going to do is you're going to lift your glutes up by using your hamstrings and your glutes and keep a nice straight line from your shoulders all the way to your knees. Hold that for a couple of seconds, breathe out and come down. You have the option of doing this in reps, or you can do a nice good hold at the top, or even combine them together if you want to. So one of the things that we hate and we see all the time is people doing sit-ups all the time and they're already lordotic, especially when you've got your feet pinned under something, um, because it puts a lot of tension on your hip flexors. Sit-ups themselves, the crunches, are already quite hip flexor predominant exercises. So if you've already got hyperactive ones, they're engaging a lot of the time, they're going to do the majority of the work. So what you need to do is either go frog-legged sit-ups, that's basically crossing your legs, take the hip flexors out of it quite so much, I personally don't really do that much sit-ups anymore. I go for things like front squats or, or weights in front for my squats, and I feel like it's much more of an engagement on your abs um, and things like chins and stuff like that. I don't honestly do very much sit-ups, but I have, although my body fat's not massively low at the moment, I'm quite genetically gifted in the fact that I have a good set of abs under there when they come out to play. So I hope that helped. I try to make it as least boring as possible, but it is an important subject that a lot of people keep asking about and it's really important that you know what's going on and, and why you're doing it, just to make sure that you're fitter in light, later life, you've got more mobility, life's easier for you, you can get your ass to the grass when you're doing those squats and just have, have a better body basically, what it's all about. Um, it's not just about how many calories you can burn, it's about having the mobility to get through life and, and live kind of comfortably really. So don't forget, we're going to do another posture one, but Leon's going to take you through the thoracic spine, which is another point where people get a bit kyphosis. So he's in the videos to come, he's going to take you through that. But apart from that, I'm going to go. Thank you so much for watching, I hope, really hope this helped you guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.